Hi, Sarah speaking here and welcome to Gridbusters. Right, it's been raining and raining and raining for the last few days and been incredibly high wind, way too windy to be up on the roof doing any more roofing. So what I thought I would do is make a quick video answering some of your questions that you've been asking in the comment section. By the way, if you've been asking questions, thank you so much. And if you've been commenting, thank you so much for your comments. I really do appreciate it. Would love to hear more of your feedback on my system. And talking about the system, a few of you have got some suggestions, a few of you have got some um, questions about how I've designed the system and kind of like why I'm doing it this way. Well, the, okay, so the, first of all, we, we actually have our solar panels on um, a roof on our barn, or they're gonna be going on the roof on the barn, which is one of the reasons why I'm re-roofing the barn first. Uh, and then we've got the plant room here, uh, it, which is actually part of, you know, attached to the house. Uh, so this is where we've got all the, you know, the Invictron in inverter, the charge controllers, the batteries and all of that. Um, now the barn is actually south facing and we've got permission to put solar panels on the roof there, which is fantastic. And, you know, the barn is uh, not that far away. I'll just show you a cutaway of the barn now. You can see it's, it's quite close to the house, but we do have underground trunking linking the two buildings together. Um, now the thing about it is, you know, a lot of people are saying, can you run DC cable that far? So let me give you a few specs uh, just to kind of get, 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 get this out of the way. I've got some notes here on my phone. So um, what we're actually gonna be doing is we're gonna be having uh, four strings of solar panels to start with on, on the roof of the barn. Each string will have eight panels. So it's gonna be eight panels per string and the uh, panels will be done in portrait, so uh, that's that's the way up they're going. Uh, so it's going to be what's called an 8S configuration. Uh, so each string will give us 10 amps uh, at 336 volts. So although it's going to be quite a long way to go from the barn all the way from here, and I mean, I've calculated, well I haven't actually 100% measured it, but even if it was, you know, 40 or 50 meters, which it isn't, I think it's probably around 25 meters, going um, 25, 30 meters um, at 336 volts isn't a problem with DC um, because we're going at such high voltage. So we have these um, charge controllers here, these uh, Victron charge controllers I have, I've got two of these, um, and you know, two, each one of these charge controllers can, two, can do two strings of solar panels and they can go 450 volts and 100 amps. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're absolutely fine there. So I'm gonna be going at 336 volts. These do 450 volts. I was gonna have 10 panels uh, originally. Um, yes, I was gonna have 10 panels in series. However, um, because sometimes, you know, <laughs> once every, like 10 years, it, it, it does drop down to sort of minus four or five. Uh, very, very rarely, um, I wanted to give myself that headwind because, that headroom, because if uh, it gets very, very cold, the voltage, as I've learned, of these solar panels will actually increase. And if I go above that 450 volts with these charge controllers, I will destroy them. Um, so what I've done is I've scaled it back to eight panels per string and that take, takes it to 336 volts and then even if we do have that once in a 10 year you know frost where it goes down to sort of minus four or five or you know lower we'll be still okay I mean to be honest it, it's it very rarely gets below minus like you know two or three here um, I, I looked at historical records and back in the early 1990s here I think it got up to like minus you know, five or six or something. So it doesn't really get that cold here, but I, you know, you never know what's gonna happen in the future, which is why I've done eight strings. But anyway, 336 volts, 10 amps, is fine for going that long distance from the barn all the way to here. Um, now I'm gonna be using six millimeter cable. That's um, in American terms, that is 10 AWG cable, um, which I've already got. Oh, let me find. Here we go. So I've got 100 meters of neutral, 100 meters of uh, negative. Um, I think I'm going to order another 100 meters simply because we've got the four strings. Um, so I'm going to have four sets of cable. So I don't think I've actually got enough thinking about it. So I'm going to order some more uh, cable. 
Now I could have put the plant room actually in the barn. Um, and when I was first designing the system, this is kind of like one of the things I considered. I thought, well, maybe we could use up a, you know, create, build a room in the barn because it's so big and we could put all this equipment actually in the barn. And I did think about that, but there's a couple of problems with that. Now, the first thing is in the winter, we would need to heat the plant room because it might get, you know, those times where it might get, you know, it does get to zero and sometimes minus one, um, in which case, if it got to minus one, the batteries would have a problem charging. We wouldn't be able to charge the batteries, which would mean we would have to heat the plant room, which would be a problem. Now, this room here, it's not a problem because I have a computer server rack here uh, in the plant room. So these are all the computer servers which I used to have in my office because I have an internet marketing business. So I have uh, RAID units, computers, switches, and all this sort of stuff. I used to have it in my office, but I put it in the plant room and I've been monitoring it all winter and it's never cold in this room. It's, 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 it's you know, a comfortable temperature. It's not a problem. You know, today it's, I think it's uh, three degrees Celsius out there and, and, and I'm absolutely fine in here. I'm not cold at all. So I can't see my breath or anything like that in here. So it's absolutely fine. And then in the summer, if it gets too hot in here, uh, we'll just whack an air conditioner in because in the summer we're gonna have so much excess solar. We won't be able to use it all. So, it will be free. it won't cost us anything it'll be free electricity to run an air conditioner in uh, the summer the winter is when we really want to try and generate as much power as we possibly can which is why we are massively oversizing the solar system and that brings us on to the other question you know, people saying you know, why are you building such a large system and that is because we have electric heating here in france so um, there's no uh, mains gas or anything like that uh, when we first moved in, there was a uh, oil central heating system here, which was complete, had completely had it. Um, it was broken. Uh, it was kind of cobbled together. Um, so when we moved in, we ripped out the, the oil central heating system and um, we put in um, electric underfloor heating, which has worked really well. The only problem is it's very, very expensive. And if we have everything turned on, in the winter, which we don't always have everything turned on, to be honest, but if we have everything turned on, uh, we tend to use um, uh, you know, around 100 kilowatt hours of electricity per day, which is pretty crazy. Um, so I know we're not gonna make that from the solar system, but the point is what we wanna do is try and build the solar system up to generate as much power in the winter to try and accommodate for that. Now, obviously in the summer, we're gonna have too much power, uh, maybe we'll do Bitcoin mining or something like that in the summer, who knows, uh, to use up some of that e excess electricity. Um, so yeah, so anyway, that, that is why um, we've decided to build the plant room here. So if we had it in the barn, we'd have to heat it. Uh, it would have been a problem. It was much easier to locate it here. The other part of this is this is not 100% off grid. This is what we call a grid fallback system. So we still have a grid connection. We're not feeding back into the grid. But what we are doing is we are using the grid connection purely as backup power. So um, in the winter, if we're not generating enough solar power via, um, you know, fr from the sun and everything, what we can do is we can still charge the batteries from the grid connection. Um, so we, we still have the grid as a kind of bit like a backup generator, if you like. So the system is still connected to the grid. Um, so we actually have, we're going to have a grid connection coming in to the inverter here and then the inverter will then go out to our breaker panel here, our fuse box here or consumer unit here um, to power the house. The other thing we've decided to do is we're moving our fuse box, our breaker panel from um, our living room, which is very ugly now, you know, it, it's when we moved in the, the French, they quite often will do this, they'll just put like a breaker panel, a fuse box directly in the middle of your living room. It's just so ugly with like plastic trunking and everything. I've seen this in so many houses in France. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's just really ugly. So we're actually paying quite a lot of money to move our electricity meter and power supply into this room. They're actually coming on Monday in a few days time to move the electricity meter and put it in the plant room here. We have actually already moved all the cabling from the house, all the all the all the, um, all the circuits from the house are all redirected into this massive fuse box here. Um, so all the cabling, all the electricity, all the electricity meters, everything is in this room. 
If it was over in the barn, we would then have to be running our electricity tails from the meter from here all the way into the barn and then from the barn all the way back here, it would just be too complicated. And the electricity board, I don't think the electricity board would connect our power supply to the barn um, because uh, but they wouldn't put the meter in the barn because it's like a different building. It has to be in like the same building. So that's another reason why we've done it. And it's just easier to just have everything in one central location and then we just run cables out to the barn. Now, in the barn, we do have the solar combiner boxes. So, so far I've got two solar combiner boxes. Each one of those solar combiner boxes can to do two strings of solar panels, and they also have the lightning protection in them as well. So, uh, the four strings of solar panels will come down fr you know, from the roof. I'll show you the cutaway of it now. They'll come out through the tube you can see coming out uh, in the wall there into those solar combiner boxes and then the power will come out of the solar combiner boxes and then down into an underground trunking that will come out and then down into here into the plant room and then go directly up into the charge controllers so i've got one charge controller already here on the wall and um, i've actually got a box down here with another charge controller here a brand new one still in the box ready to go up um, so that's how we've um, designed the system. Hope that kind of like answers most of your questions. Um, we, this is just phase one of the project. Uh, I, I'm kind of thinking about maybe putting another two strings of panels um, on the roof, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. I just want to see how the system uh, kind of works, uh, you know, as a phase one. So phase one is just what we have now. So the four strings of solar panels, We've got two 15 kilowatt hour batteries. We've got two charge controllers. We've got this 15 kilowatt um, Victron uh, Quattro in inverter. Phase two of the program is I want to you know, do another two batteries probably pretty soon to take this up to 60 kilowatt hours. And if we need to, we can always install another two strings of solar panels very, very easily. All I would need to do is just add another charge controller to the system, which I would put, I think, over, over here by the breaker panel and we just need to add one more solar combiner box in the garage and I've made a space uh, for that. Also, when I'm running the cables underground to, um, to the barn for the solar panels, I'm gonna put in extra cables just in case we want to put in another two strings of panels. Uh, the other thing I wanna do is, I really do wanna try and get these batteries up to 100 kilowatt hours um, of power. So uh, that's something I'm gonna be doing over the next 12 months, getting more battery kits in, testing different battery kits. I'm not necessarily going to use these all, you know, always use these battery kits, but you know, I'll be testing different battery kits. I want to get this, like I said, up to a, a, at least hundred kilowatt hours. And that way we've got, you know, the worst case scenario, we've got a whole day's worth of power um, in, in battery. So hope that answers your questions. If you have any other questions or any comments, please do comment below this video and let me know your thoughts. Let me, let me know anything I could design, things I might've missed. Um, let me know what you would like to see. Uh, we're going to be starting again on the roof, hopefully um, uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday next week, if the weather is okay. Um, so <laughs> we're going to have to wait until then to see uh, if the weather's okay, um, if we can start on the roof. Um, on Monday, we have the electricity board coming to move the electricity meter. I have a French qualified electrician coming over to check everything over as well. Um, and he's going to be helping me hook everything up from the electricity meter to the quattro and, and the fuse box and everything else. So we're going to be doing that on Monday. Uh, then later in the week, I'm going to be pulling all the cable through from the barn um, into here for the charge controllers. So I'll be filming all that and releasing that as videos as well. Um, and then um, next week, we've also got some uh, timber arriving so that we can reinforce the roof because actually yes that is another question that you you guys had you were asking am I going to be like reinforcing the roof um, because I'm putting solar panels on and the answer to that question is yes I'm going to be reinforcing the roof so I've ordered um, a whole bunch of timber and um, the next job you know, we, we need to wait for a weather window to do it because we have to take the whole remaining side of the, the barn roof off before we reinforce all the timber work and we can't do it if it's windy because if the wind gets underneath the roof it could rip the whole thing off so we need this like weather window to be able to take that much of the roof off in one go before we can reinforce the roof so yeah we'll be filming all of that um, and um, hope you enjoy the videos 
Remember to like and subscribe. Uh, really do appreciate your comments and um, I'll catch you next time.